Hi, welcome to the Stitch TV show. I'm Lynn. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is live, live from Red Hill Stitch Shop here <laughs> from in Marietta, Saturday, Georgia. And it's Saturday morning. No, it's Saturday yeah, night. It's true. The Stitch Sorry. is an online quilt talk show, the perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. Join us for twice monthly talk shows, virtual stitching, celebrity interviews, book clubs, podcasts, all that. You can learn more at thestitchtvshow.com. Our show today is brought to you by the Stitch TV Show Shop. <gasps> Visit us for our shop patterns and more at thestitchtvshow.com. Show merchandise. Oh, right. Hot diggity. Yes. Today we're going to be doing a round of How Should I Quilt This? Um, and we're joined by some of our quilts and also some of your quilts. So... So, uh, what you've been doing on our hiatus, Lynn? It's been 26 hours <laughs> since episode 324. So, yeah, like, <laughs> what we thought was really funny was um, we, a month ago, we filmed once a month, so a month ago we filmed our last two episodes for our third season. And so we were kind of funny and we were like, yay, our third season's over. And then today, or yesterday, it dropped. And all these people have been asking you questions like, how long, how long do we have to wait? It's like, <laughs> like literally a day. Yeah. For those of you live. <laughs> for the, yeah. The so, nice people in the computer have to wait uh, two weeks. And we decided to renew ourselves. Hooray. So we're doing a fourth season. <laughs> we, we got picked up. We got picked up by us. <laughs> so, yay. Thank goodness we're in charge. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and we have other people hanging out with us. Yeah, you know, so I spent the hiatus. I, like, watched some Netflix. <laughs> Netflix and quilts. I drank some wine. Did you really? I did. I made oh, one of the tops from today. You made it top? Before like, I started yeah. the wine. That That's probably before you started cutting. It was some curve piecing, so <laughs> I can't can't with the wine and the wine curve and piecing. Wine and curve piecing stuff, yeah, Dodging. exactly. Yeah. I I don't know what I did. Mindlessly scroll through Facebook. I, I no, 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 no. I answered some business emails and <laughs> prepped. I am flying out to Utah next week because I got booked to be on Quilted the Long Arm Quilting Show <laughs> that's coming out. And so I'm doing a new technique for Quilted the Long Arm Quilting Show. And so I had to finish all my prep for that show <laughs> so I finished the quilt that Yay. they're gonna hang and I, that's what I did hooray so right yes yeah. so we will keep you updated on when I will be on that show and I'm wow. filming next week ah. Ah. so because these people will be professionals they are they told her to like they're gonna do her makeup and hair for her I'm like wow <laughs> <laughs> they said, they said, come to the studio with no makeup on and dry, clean hair. And I was like, well, that's every day. That's any day that ends in Y. <laughs> I got that. <laughs> I can do that. So anyway, yeah. Cool. All right. All right. So now some, what? Quilt tops. Now for some quilt tops. So from quilt tops. Quilt tops. Okay. So we are going to start uh, with some tops from Amy. Thank you, Amy. Uh, so this one is called Houses. And let me make sure we have it the right way up. Yes, that would be good. I think it. I think. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna guess it's got some houses in it. It does. <laughs> it does, but it's I mean, a very like, modern interpretation of houses. Or is it's it one story modern. in a basement? Oh, that's good. We don't know. It's a mystery. I think it's a modern <laughs> interpretation of the house block. Yeah, which is really great. Yeah. Really great. So what what would you do on this? So I'm inclined to hold on. Oh. I want to go and like quilt little doors. Oh my gosh, that's what I was thinking. And then you could like pop a chimney on. Yeah, you and could then... totally add to bring out the house motif. Yes. Yeah. Like you could do the little doors, you could do windows, uh -huh. you know, chimney. You could do some extra stuff and turn like one into a church and one into a firehouse and one into a schoolhouse. Right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> now, if you were going to do an all over design and wanted to stay with this but not make it really custom, what would you do? I would use a variegated thread and oh, I would do a swirly like pattern. See, no, I would do triangles. I would do the like triangle and just keep repeating the triangles to kind of keep this emphasizing this point. Or, 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 but wait, there's more. Oh, wait, there's more. You could do a chevron mimicking the oh, house tops. Oh, that's good too. And that you could do with a walking foot. Yes. 
Yes. Or an adventurous long arm and some rulers, depending on how crazy you are. I, if, okay, if you were doing this on the long arm, the triangles would be easier than a chevron all yes. the way across. Because the long arm, it's hard to keep it straight. Yeah, on a diagonal. On a diagonal, right. You would have to use what a if ruler, you loaded it on the which diagonal? slows you down. What? What if you loaded it on the diagonal? That's too complicated. <laughs> Like Look, we both had like over a hundred average in geometry and that's too complicated. I know, I could do it, but it would like I yeah, that would be interesting. What color thread? I said variegated, but like that could be anything. White? I would do white. I like white. Or honestly, any color thread I think you choose would be great on this. Um, of course you know me, orange would be awesome. You could do this lime green would be pretty, purple would be good. I have another thought. Okay. Oh, you could do different colors, like this could be lime green, and this could be orange, and this could be, you know. What if there's a lot of prints with dots on them? Yeah. You could do like big pebbling. Not like super intense pebbling, because that takes forever. Like, yeah, but pebbles like, are great, but once you start, you're like... six inch pebbles. Yeah, those may that be could interesting. Work. That could be cute. Yeah. Yeah, because I went opposite of the angles and you leaned in. And I'm like, yeah, I would. You leaned Let's in. Let's emphasize them. You got some quilt bling on you already. All right. Oh, yay. <laughs> quilt bling. Cool. Okay. <laughs> do, do, do. <laughs> Sorry, had to call in some production support. <laughs> okay, so this next one also from Amy. It is Dancing Nine Patches with some vintage Tula. Is there an up or a down? Okay. Well, this way is up now. So right. let it be written. <laughs> oh, look. Oh. Sorry. I'm, this is always a hard thing for me because she's so much taller. <laughs> Sorry. Mm, yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. I, honestly, honestly, I think one of the most important things for anyone to do before you decide to quilt something is put it up on a wall, stand back, and look at what you did and pat yourself on the back because you did an awesome job. <laughs> um, seriously, because I think getting away in front of the quilt when it's up in front of you gives you a different perspective and lets your juice, creative juices flow. So, like, just the, the impact of this when you put it up, it was really good. And take it a step further, put it up, leave the room, get a drink of water, a little bio break, come back in, act like you're surprised to see the quilt, like, <gasps> it's a Look new first impression yeah. of it. Exactly. Okay, so, I has four this. triangles and a nine patch arrangement. It's got some direction, so we've yes. got some pointing down, some pointing up, some pointing that That's way. That's what I love about it. I love the direction. How, how would you quilt it then? Making you go first. Okay, so what I think I would do is I would treat this brown as a path, and I would do uh, the same kind of quilting through that path. Now, you can, it could be easy from like ribbon work you know what I'm saying? The ribbon where it looks like uh, figure eights, but they don't the ribbon cross. Candy. Yeah, ribbon candy. Do that through all of these and just like create your own path through it. And it could be all different paths. So I think that that helps that dancing, which is what it's named. And then do the same kind of motif in the nine patch half square triangles. Whether that's, you know, just a quick little feather in each one of these. And then leave the others unquilted? And the others unquilted, or it's one design for the whole thing. I kind of like, but I like real intricate work, so let's you get just time say, for that. Um, <laughs> I, would do, I would do a cute little half flower in each one of these. And what I mean is like a half daisy, like four loops kind of thing in each one of these, and then do ribbon work. And it's not really hard, but it would look very custom. So first of all, props for putting prints and batiks together. Yeah, a lot of people you. do that. Love that. And vintage fabric with modern fabric. Yes. Love that. Okay. So you're I'm thinking. thinking. Okay, so it's a very modern use of brown, which is good because lots of times people put brown in a quilt and it tends to take it back to a more traditional look. And I know Amy's a modern quilter. Yes. If so, not, she should be. But you could <laughs> like kind of lean into that brown, and I'm tempted to do you follow the path idea, but instead of ribbon candy, do some of like the wavy lines that kind of go back that look a little bit like wood grain. Oh, okay, lean that's into, good. Lean into yeah. the brown. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then I like, I still like the idea of doing like a custom thing in the half square, but I would have it draw from the design of 
the fabric itself. So in here, I would do, I would play on this little curve and I would do a little orange peel design. And in here, this is a very curvy thing, so I could do like little circle, big circle, little circle. Right. So I would mix it up, which is even more custom. Right. Depending on how much yeah. time and patience you have. Right. Um, if you were going all over, what would you do? Um, oh, if I was doing an all over, I think a, gosh, I'm going to say that triangle design again, but it's very, you know, I'm leaning into the triangles. If you want to go opposite that, I think a great all over is a hook, circle, the spiral where thing. you go in the hook and hook it out. Um, if you're doing opposite, I don't, this screams custom to me, like every quilt. Every, <laughs> so, quilt. every quilt, I think, oh, we should custom quilt that. Um, but I don't think it's got to be a hard custom quilt. I think it's very doable. Well, I think, too, you could draw from some of the design work where here you could pull feathers out if you wanted to. Right. Or you could pull out the leaf shape that's in here. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay. <laughs> it's a nine patch, right? Um, create nines. And then just quilt a bunch of nines. Or sixes. Well, on if you ways. turned it up there, <laughs> which but is you, kind of like a yin yang look. But I would do. But I would make the nine, and then I would write nine, and then I make more. I don't know. I think that'd be kind of interesting. What color thread? Do you want it to stand out, or do you not? If you want it to stand out, I pick a, a medium brown and do it all medium brown. No, that's a receipt, not a standout. Right. If I didn't want it to stand no, out, no, but you said I if I wanted to stand out. Sorry. Okay, if I, I love correcting people, I'm sorry. <laughs> she does it all the time. I, I correct my kids too, it's fine. <laughs> um, no, I would, okay, so if I wanted it to not stand out, I would pick a medium brown and that's what okay. I would do. If I wanted it to stand out, I think teal is your option. Because See, you got I would go yellow. Huh. For like real contrast. Huh. Huh. Ooh, how amazing, you said teal and I said a warm color. That's opposite. That is opposite. There you go. I love this, this is a great quote. Hey, what kind of binding do you have planned, or do you? The, yeah. Black. <laughs> scrappy binding would be great. Yes, I would say that. Like scrappy whatever binding. Whatever random leftover bits you yeah. have. <laughs> Nobody's going to know in the binding it's this big. Teeny tiny. Teeny tiny. All right. Okay, so our next one is from Adele. Hey, Adele. Hey, Adele. Um, so this is a quilt. Whoops. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. We have dropped out a pantograph. Yes, we're supposed to talk about this. Forgot okay. it. Okay, these are all catty corner because you're taller. Oh, well, give the people what they want, Lynn. <laughs> okay. okay. Do we need to talk about that first? Well, she brought this pantograph and said that this is what she was considering. Okay. I think this is a good choice. Yes. I like this pantograph, and I think that this would well, add. Well, because it pulls in I from think this. it pulls in that. So, yes, if I were doing a pantograph, I think this is a great choice. So. If you weren't doing a pantograph. If I wasn't doing it, I would custom quilt the heck out of this. Outline the ornaments. Oh, yeah. Put some fur ornaments. branches in. Extend the fur branches out a little bit from here. I would be doing the swirl stuff all through this. Snowflake yes. it up. Snowflake it up. Do snowflakes on these. Ooh, you could do like a snowflake here. Different, just different snowflake. Yes. And then outline all these ornaments. And what would be cool <laughs> is if you add, and then you're well, like, you do and Dale's like, oh my God. <laughs> yes. They'll never get it until 2020. Here we come. You know, here's, <laughs> here's the rule with Christmas. It's always coming. <laughs> It's always coming. It could be this Christmas year. Christmas in July. It could be next Christmas year. It's summer. always coming. So, um, but what would be really cool <laughs> is if you outlined the ornaments and then did a piano key stripe oh, behind gosh. it to give you depth. I totally do that. <laughs> this has got a lot. I I I think quilting panels is great practice for long armors and also provides a ton of creativity, where you can take whatever the image is. Mimic the image, copy the image, extend on the image. It just gives you a really great big jumping off point. Now a slightly simpler version of custom quilting for me. <laughs> like still outline the ornaments in the tree, like quilt the tree to these shapes. 
take the star at the top and then just do wavy lines radiating out oh, that's from a there. Idea. Yeah. And that's simpler. Like you spend most of your time custom quilting that, and then you're just doing wavy lines ra radiating out. Right. And you could extend that down like below the tree. So that's a little more manageable if, you know, you maybe want it for Christmas next year instead of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> maybe Christmas this year. But the pantograph is a great option. Now she brought this thread, the cream thread, and she said, is this good thread? And yes, Glide is good thread. I think I have this color in my house. I have the white, so. like the pure white. But anytime I am auditioning thread, so you want to take some off of your... You got to take the plastic wrapper off. You got to take the plastic wrapper off and you want to hold it up onto a bunch of different colors on your quilt to see how does that thread look against red? How does it look against this cream? How does it look against the gold? So that is how I audition thread. And usually it's already on my long arm and I will just drape it, drape it all over, you know, with several different shades to figure out which shade I'm really interested in. And I think this is good. Like I would, I would feel comfortable with this. One, it matches the main background, this main background here, where you're gonna see it stand out is against the red and not so much the gold and a little bit on the green. So this is the only one it's really going to contrast on. Um, but if you're wanting to contrast more, I think if you did red in this background, it'd be distracting. Yeah. I think cream is probably one of the best choices for the background for this. Now, so. point about auditioning thread. If you, like me, have cats, <laughs> don't leave it out. <laughs> yes. Unless you want a nice trip to the emergency And I bed. always like to put it back in so yes. that it doesn't... No, and cat Salukis do it too. So this is not just cats. Salukis can do it too. So okay. love it. Okay, so the next one is a moose panel, also from Adele. She's doing a lot of these look like she gifts. Does. Like you're doing these for gifts? Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay, now I love this panel because I think moose are funny. Do they tell great jokes? Why yes, they're funny? hilarious. <laughs> I don't know, I just love them. <laughs> moose are great. I love this panel. Okay, what are you gonna what are you gonna do? Okay, so my first inclination is to at least frame out the individual boxes and then trace the outlines in there. And that's great practice for free motion quilting because you have the shape. Right. there. I agree. Um, and if you're not comfortable with free motion, you want to pick a thread that matches the background. So for here, it would be a black, here would be a cream, a black, and so on. And I think this design too, because all of the shapes as they're drawn have a black outline, you could probably use black for all of it. But if you stray out here, you can't lighten up a black thread like you could if you had a light thread on black and you go in with your uh, gel <laughs> pen and like color it in. Not <laughs> like, that we've done this. that, but I'm just saying. I have a video about that I need to post. I have, <laughs> like, here's me coloring I've over got, my thread. I've got quilts that have ribbons <laughs> that had some markers on them. Just saying. <laughs> no, the judge didn't know, but I did. Okay, anyway. so if we did a custom job in the panel, what about all the borders? I know you love some borders. I, I well, yeah, I do love some borders, and this is about my style of borders because there's like four. So I would do something different in each one, whether I chose like um, really tight swirls or um, pebbles in one border, then did ribbon candy, then did uh, a different swirly kind of thing here. And then I love a good piano key where you go in and out to make it, to give it uh, straight. Now when you do that, are you free motioning yep. that or are you using rulers? No, nope. I free motion it. but. You can use rulers. I just have gotten to where I can see, that's about an inch away and I draw a line. And nobody's measuring it. And if they are measuring it. They're not quilt worthy. Right, exactly. I mean, unless they're a judge and I don't know that I'd ever gift a quilt to a judge. Yeah, really. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, it depends on how close you want them. You can use ruler work, which is, that would be really simple. If you haven't tried ruler work before in quilting, doing straight lines out, that is so simple and great place to start with ruler work. And there's gonna be a class on ruler work with domestic machines that will be teaching here at the shop sometime in the near future. Okay. <laughs> okay, now, yes. if you were doing it all over. If I were doing it all over. Holly leaves, holly berries. Leaves. I do as those big all as you want. Yeah, and there's a sample of holly leaves and the quilt behind them. Amazing. 
<laughs> Amazing. Uh, I do the holly leaves all the time. I think that's great. A poinsettia or mm -hmm. poinsettia. How do you say it? I don't put poinsettia that extra I or poinsettia. Poinsettia. It's pronounced both ways. Um, yeah, if you're wrong half the time. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Carry on. Poinsettia <laughs> is, um, is a good choice. And I think doing different um, circles or ornament kind of motif would be good. How do we feel about quilting over faces? <laughs> I know. What if you hurt his feelings? You're not going to hurt his feelings. Look, in most of the quilts that we have with little animals and stuff, we chop their heads off when we're cutting them into squares. So There may be a right. I spy quilt of all animal behinds in my future. <laughs> Just for fun? Just yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can see you totally Just... do that. I, I don't have a problem quilting over faces. I mean, if you were doing this custom and you quilted over it and it wasn't in the motif, like you didn't like make this nose look like a nose and make the antlers look like antlers. If you gave him angry eyebrows. Oh, that'd be funny. <laughs> no, he's too cute. You can't do that. He's too cute. So I, I think if you did it all over design, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, because you could even just do like the tree shape or. Yeah, but I love the all over design with holly leaves. One, they're super easy to do on both domestic and long. They're very forgiving too. Yeah. Because no tree is the same. Right, exactly. Right. Oh, now. Oh, right. Red thread. Love it. This is good thread, too. It's actually superior so fine. Thread. Very popular. I think red's good. Yeah, because it's dark enough to blend. And it's picking up. I mean, the only one where it doesn't really have red in it is in this green border wow. and the tan border. Otherwise, I think it's, it's going to go with everything. I think this is perfect color. Good job. Yeah. Okay, so our next quilt is very small. <laughs> well, these are antique. <laughs> it's a tiny quilt. It's going to keep you very warm. <laughs> For your mouse. And this is a crazy quilt technique, sort of, or improv piecing maybe. Yes. Done in the quarters. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, Clyde brought this to us, and these are antique quilt tops and pieces of tops that she brought and said, hey, what should I do with this? First of all, you have two choices. If you want to put this in a quilt, you're going to either cut one of these elongated triangles and piece it in to make a square. Y seam. Right? Or which would like a obtuse Y seam. Yeah. Or which would give you a square that you could then piece together. Or you can turn this under and do applique on it and applique it to a background. Both choices are very good choices. And this the condition of this older piece, this vintage piece, which is about 1930s, circa 1930s, um, although it's got some older fabric in it, uh, but this kind of gives it away that it's a 1930s here, although this could be newer. Anyway, uh, turning this under, it's in good enough shape, you could turn it under an applique down, nothing wrong with that. Um, and then quilt it however you like. If you're wanting to machine quilt and you're working with vintage or antique pieces, just make sure that the fabric is not fragile, fragile, so that if you sew through it, it's not gonna disintegrate under your needle. Um, if that's true, and it seems to be very fragile, you may choose not to quilt it or hand quilt it because that won't be as tough on the piece. Anytime you're putting an antique or vintage piece under a machine, you just got to think it is hitting that fabric pretty rough over and over again. So um, I think this feels like it looks like it could be machine quilted. I don't see a problem with this. Now, in terms of thread mm -hmm. with antique fabric, would you want to go with a thinner thread just to minimize the size of the hole going into the antique fabrics or does that matter? I don't know that it totally matters. I mean, yeah, they would have used a thinner thread. Do you want to be authentic? They would have used a thinner. They're not going to use a pearl cotton, you know, unless they're tying the quilt. That's another thing you could do with some antique tops is tie the tops instead of quilting them. Mm -hmm. So, um, now I don't, I don't know that I would consider that. I would pick out whatever thread I liked. 
I know a lot of people are like, well, if it's antique, you have to use cotton or you can't use poly yeah. or you can't. I'm like, use what you like. It's your so quilt. It's your quilt. Do what you want with it. You don't invite the quilt police to come scrutinize it. So. Right, exactly. <laughs> and what I like about when you find some of these smaller vintage pieces, because you see these at yard sales and auctions and, and stuff like that, you know, these can be gifted in and of themselves. Like if you finish this and even added like a date or a you know a little like if you were into embroidery and embroidered a little hand motif or something or put a saying on here sisters are forever something like that this is a cute wonderful little gift for family for friends you know that i just think is precious i guess my aunt would say it's precious i would think it's my precious. grandma would say that tickles me <laughs> <laughs> so I I love I love finding these and I think that they can be very charming in gifts. Mm -hmm. So good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So also from Fly, we have oh a this is a blocks. top. Yes. Yes. Let's All right. Blue and pink. Blue and pink. Wow. So do this you, is old. Do you think this is sturdy enough to go under a, a machine? I think it is. It's hand pieced, by the way. I say that. I'm pretty sure it is. Yes, it's hand pieced. So you by want the to way, press it well. You do need to press it well. Um, how to tell the difference between a hand piece top and a machine piece top look at the back. is oh. <laughs> to see the <laughs> stitches. She's right. Look at the back. <laughs> but if it's already quilted, oh, okay, that's different. You can't look at the back. Um, you try to peel open the seams a little bit. Don't rip them open, but peel open the seams a little bit. And if you notice that there is a V in the seam instead of a straight up and down thread, it's a V that is hand pieced because we hand piece with a running stitch so we go in and out and we create these v's and that's how you tell the difference so this is hand pieced it's got a lot of cool old fabric in it this is uh claret this is indigo blue you've got some 30s in here you've got some i've heard these dark fabrics uh, these are normally from about the 18 uh, late 1800s and the dark fabrics, a lot of times, um, they refer to as mourning fabrics. I have, so at that time frame in our history, we would have, you know, um, if someone in our family died, husband or whatever, we would have gone into mourning and would only wear black or black prints. And, but I've also heard, and I don't know how true this is, but I've also heard that the lighter the black print is, like if it gets more white or less dark solid black it's called half mourning so you could wear that after so long of being in mourning so you weren't as sad but you were still sad and if it were still the 1800s you would then move as a woman you would move into lavender right yeah and dove grays yes and yeah you could do those i know so, that from gone with the wind yes <laughs> we are in atlanta all right so um so we think it could be machine quilted we think this could be machine quilted i think um Clyde does want to do some machine quilting, so that would be a good choice for this. Um, I would do, I would do what, if, if I hand quilted this, I would definitely do what they call to the piece, uh, which is a very traditional old quilting technique. And to the piece is about a quarter of an inch inside the seam, and you're just going to mimic the shape and put a seam all the way around that. So each of these blocks would be, um, quilted inside quarter of an inch inside that seam and it'd be called to the piece as in piece of fabric um and i don't know that that's not a great idea it'd be a bear it's a lot of thread starts and stops if you're doing that yeah. on the machine on the machine you do i am more tempted to designate certain of the six piece star and do yes. like 
something like a swirl going out to the thing, like right. quilt in the ditch around you know the outside of one of those six pointed stars and then do like a swirl inside some there. of these are going to be tough to be quilted in the ditch just because it's right yeah. but you'll note like they don't nest exactly right so you're going to have like some spacer pieces and in right. that you could do you could do an orange peel and that lets I you bet, travel from point to point an orange peel would be great that would be a great one orange peel it and what we mean by that is you do a curved line from corner to corner and so each piece is going to have these curved lines. That will take a while, but I think it'd look good. Now the trick with that, you can't like complete one thing and then, then you're stuck here in the center. You've got to travel back out. So one way to mechanically do that is like start at one, like orange peel, orange peel, orange peel, orange peel, orange peel like all the way down and then come back up and do the other side of that shape. And that will keep you from having to like break thread or travel too much over. Right. Because particularly with the antique top, you don't want to travel over it too much. No. So you kind of, you mark your path going down and then yeah. come back up. Yeah. I think you're gonna wanna be in the piece. This would be hard to stitch in the ditch. Yeah, it will be. So, good answers? All right. <laughs> oh, we got another pin. <laughs> okay. Now we have one of Lynn's tops. Okay, so um, this is one of my tops. Oh, yes. oh, I got some cool bling tubes. All right, good well, tops. Good tops. So it's a Lone Star. Lone Star, yay! And it's got okay. some cafe, and it's got some brights, and some. some is that Tula? Tula. No. That is Tula? This is Tula. Oh, okay. This is Tula. This is true. That's Tula. That's Tula. This is Cave. Okay. This is modern stuff. So now when I did a Lone Star, I did a motif out from the center and, and then back in and did that on each of the blades. Um, I know you. You're going to custom quilt it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so what That's why you, it's not quilted yet. How, how have you done talk. your previous Lone Stars? Um, I, oh gosh, that's a good question. I did motifs out here that were custom, but in here I like treated this as one and then I did a similar or a different design like a in this ring then a different design in this ring. So I try, kind of treated these like borders kind of deal. So, but now, I wanted to know what you would do with it because very common to a Lone Star is doing you know, uh, orange peel. Yep. Very common, and it's a great technique for a Lone Star. So, what's the opposite of a star? I don't know. It's you kind of an open-ended question. Yeah, I was going to say. I don't know. <laughs> what's the what? sky? So, I like your idea, but right. I'm going to change it. Okay. As and I'm going to come in with some bigger pebbles. Because I want to add some softness and some roundness to all the points. Okay, so you're going to go opposite. So I'm going to start with like a red thread in here, so it's going to match. Then I'm going to do kind of a green thread. And then I'm going to do a gray thread. And yeah, there's some breaks and stuff. Although you could use the same gray thread from here as you would out here in this piece. Because it's right. close enough, you could get yeah. away with it. So I would soften some of these points with some bigger pebbles. Again, not like... No. <laughs> I like ones I normally do. You do like one tiny like pebble this. just for, you know, Me. honoring it, and that's it. And then you get bigger. Um, because I think that also calls back to right. this. I like the, the round. And, you know, what's out here. So, But then I would go crazy, and I would do the angle stuff out here. I was thinking about doing ruler work out here. Could like, you see it, though, on this kind of print? That's the thing with ruler work. Unless you use a contrasting thread, you put all that energy into getting... Straight, straight lines, lines or yeah. you know curved lines. I this don't is think why it's not quilted. I don't know what I want to do with it yet. So what I would do is like that box traveling oh, okay. motif. Yeah. And that goes pretty quick. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I think I'm gonna. Well, well, I don't know what I'm gonna do. She right. quilt it in 2020. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, I oh. keep forgetting. I put that extra. Well, why do you put that extra pin in? I don't know. I don't know either. Okay. All right, this is one of mine. Uh, and it is a clamshell quilt. Now, I have done a clamshell quilt that was entirely custom quilted, so we're not looking for that suggestion. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And just a note about the edges. If you can see them like, oh, they don't line up at all. That's okay, because when you piece this together, sometimes there's not gonna be matching. Um, and then after you're done quilting it, you go and like trim all that off and, and neaten it up. So these are 12 inch clamshells. Right. Because I'm me, I have darker ones on the bottom and lighter ones on top. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. That looks good. Okay. I think it's beautiful. How would you quilt it? I finished piecing it last night. <laughs> That's what I did on hiatus. No, tell me when tough. you started it, though. Um, well, I had I had it cut out and laid out last weekend. Okay. All right. So and I had, you I had about down to here piece, right. and then I did the other half yeah, last okay, night. Yeah, okay, okay. All right, so what would I do? <laughs> but you don't want to custom quilt it. Right. I just can't like I'm it. good with like I can't even answer that question. I'm good with custom quilting like the teal ones. Well, I I think you could do like a really cool like feathery kind of fan, fan thing. Yeah, I think those would look good. And if you did that in all of them, then it would be custom quilted, but it'd be the same, and so it wouldn't be hard. So I like the fan thing. Or pick three motifs. Do a fan in one. Do, you know, a curled feather in one, and do something else, pebbles, your big circles in another, something. I'm fine telling other people to do pebbles, I'm gonna do it myself. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Anything else? What if you did this thing? I don't know if we can see, I don't think we can see I that think, on camera. So but. it's a puzzle piece kind of thing, yeah. angular puzzle piece. It's like this is a nice little fleur de lis you can pull from. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're gonna stick to the fabric, yeah, I think that's a good idea too. All right. Or I could even, you know, come and do some cross hatch ruler work. Oh jazz yeah, jazz for one of the motifs. For one, of, so now you're custom quilting it. So you're doing. But only like maybe this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So what color thread? Oh. Medium gray. Except, like, do some. I would do medium gray, but like, do some like teal or green and like some of these gray ones. Yeah, do that not would... want. <laughs> That's thread changing. I can't find my spiral I need. <laughs> All right, we have time for one more. One more. Do we want to so do pick this one or the bird one? Bird. Bird. Okay, here's another one that I made. That we got to hang it high enough to see the bird, maybe. For reference. Is that high enough? I don't know. Do I need to come over there and pin it? There we go. Okay. Okay. So these are some improv piece log cabin blocks made from, I got a scrap bag of batik strips. <laughs> Go ahead. You got a scrap bag of batik strips. And so then I made, I made enough blocks to make a different quilt and then had more strips left and thought, I'll make some more blocks. And so I had nine blocks made and then I sashed it with some other coordinating batiks. Uh, and then I channeled Portlandia and I put a bird on it. This is supposed to be a brown thrasher, the state bird of Georgia. There you go. That's good. He doesn't have an eye yet, but he will. I would, I would draw a tree in here with the great big branches that go out and like quilt a big tree in here to tie this in. So kind of like extend the, this yeah, little extend branch Yeah, extend this, out. extend it out here. What color thread though? I would do, I would hide the tree with the thread. I would quilt the heck out of it so that I get the tree on there, but but I would make the tree out of this kind of creamy color so that you could kind of see it, but you would have to look to see it. That's what I would do. Okay. Which is not what she's gonna do. Okay. <laughs> Y'all don't tell my coworker, it's a baby quilt gift for her. So knowing that oh, it's for a baby. So yeah. Like I'm still, I'm cool with a tree. Like I can yeah. do that. No yeah, problem. you can. And then what would I do in the spot where there's not a tree though? Can you? Babies don't care. We babies don't care. Can you quilt their name? I don't know the baby's name yet. Oh, you're giving it to a pre-baby born? I see, I have this rule that baby I'm not giving you I'm not giving you a baby quilt until after the baby's born. I know the name and I have nine months after she, it's well, born. Well, she they may not have settled on a name yet. I haven't specifically asked yeah. her. I know it's a boy. It's a boy. This doesn't narrow it down. I literally have like three co-workers in active pregnancy. So jokes on every one of you. We don't know who it's for. We totally oh. do. I do. <laughs>
Okay. So, I, you know, maybe or say something saying, I don't know, you could quilt Ooh. a blessing. How about, or, you know, how about like that. if I do the tree, but to show some contrast and keep the tree outline, I just do like straight lines. Ooh, that'd look good. And that way there's a little bit or of... Or kind of a sky right. wavy motif. Poofy clouds. Poofy clouds. I like some this. bird friends. Great. I like it. This is a cute He's bird. Cute. By the way, one of the tips that she did with this bird to help it stand out is she used the Pentel, um, Pentel fabric? No, gel roller <laughs> pin for fabric. That's it. Just and it gives it on a great it's black too. line. So yeah. um, it's a really good tip. Before I had outlined it, out. like this was way too close to the background to tell. And I may go draw the eye in with that same pin, but because it's meant for fabric, it's not going to wash out because baby quilts get washed. <laughs> right, a lot, yeah. a lot. Yes, babies are very leaky. And yeah, make messes. Lots of masses. All right. Okay. So let's leave this one up while okay. we do our little closey clothes. All right. So how would you quilt any of these? How have you quilted similar tops? You can let us know. Leave a comment on our blog or on the YouTube episode or even in our Facebook group, What's Up Stitches? And that's all we have for this episode. Today's show is made possible by the Stitch TV Show Shop. Check out our patterns and show merchandise at shop.thestitchtvshow.com. And we'd like to th thank 77 Peaches and Big Thick Productions for helping to produce this stitch. If you enjoyed the show, please like, share, and subscribe. The next virtual stitch ends Friday, August 10th at 7 p.m. Eastern, broadcast live on our YouTube channel. Our next book club episode is August 24th. My podcast, Hip to Be a Square, is out Fridays or Saturdays. <laughs> All those details and more can be found on our website, thestitchtvshow.com. To purchase the Stitch TV Show merchandise, tune in next time for more quilting chat with friends.